All right, everyone, this is Zero Budget Geek, and welcome to the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, Skull and Shackles. We will be playing the Plunder and Peril Adventure, which has five scenarios. The first scenario we're playing in this video is Island Hopping. Plunder and Peril. The shackles include hundreds of islands spinning off from the western coast of Garund, and they're the perfect hunting grounds for the inner sea region's most notorious pirates. To join the ranks, you'll have to learn how to survive, not just aboard a ship, but among the treacherous scalawags and vicious sea monsters who call these broken isles home. You'll face brutal ship-to-ship -ship battles, engagements with raiders from beneath the waves, and treacherous ships ashore. The life of a pirate is not for the weak. Island hopping. There's booty ahead if you're bold enough to seize it. A merchantman's vessel is ready for the taking, but an enemy ship prowls nearby. Its captain is an Adaro barbarian, a tyrant who would just as soon feed you to the sharks. Maybe you should make him their new chum. The first of our two characters in this game is Lyrian, the female half-elf gunslinger. She is an expert at firearms and she can shuffle a card into her deck to add 1d4 to the combat check at another location. We also have Olak, the male half-orc war priest. He can display any number of blessings or weapons to uh, add a bonus to checks by other characters. And he can also uh, reveal a blessing or an armor card to use it as a heal spell. During this scenario, if you defeat a hammerhead shark henchman, put it on the bottom of a random other open location. You may still attempt to close the location that henchman came from. Okay, so here's our standard setup. We have our uh, adventure and scenario cards here. These are the locations. These are the location decks. Here are characters. We're, we're going to start them both off at the floating shipyard. Here are the characters' hands, their character decks, and their character cards. This is the blessings deck that we're going to use to count the turns. And then the new thing is the ship card here. Let's take a closer look at that. So at the beginning of every game, uh, we always start off with a ship. In this particular game, we're going to start with the Merchantman. And it starts uh, the game with a Plunder card underneath it. So there'll be a card face down underneath it like this. Now, anytime we defeat an enemy ship, we'll add another Plunder card under it. Now, we cannot look at those Plunder cards, but at the end of the scenario, uh, we will be able to uh, acquire those cards. Now, every time we defeat a uh, enemy ship and we get a Plunder, we're going to roll on this table table here it's a d6 and we may get a random weapon spell armor item or ally and that goes underneath our ship now there are times during a combat with another ship that our ship will get damaged we can prevent that damage by discarding cards from our hand or playing special abilities otherwise if our ship takes damage it will be turned face down like this now you can attempt a craft check at the beginning of your turn to repair it, to put it the other side. Otherwise, uh, you'll be losing plunder cards while the ship is damaged. Now, uh, during any, any player's turn or a character's turn, um, they are considered to be in command of the ship and the ship is at their location for, uh, uh, you know, for a variety of, uh, of effects. And uh, when that player moves, the ship is considered to move with them. In this scenario, the locations are the Shark Island, the Floating Shipyard, the Lonely Island, and the Tempest K. So we're going to start with a random item as our plunder, our starting plunder. And we're going to turn over the top card, the Blessings deck, and we're going to have the Gunslinger go first. Okay, she's going to explore the top card of the location deck, and it is a barrier. Lookout duty, it's a wisdom perception of six. The difficulty to defeat this is increased by the serial number, that's zero. If defeated, you may look at the top card of the barrier's location deck. If it is a monster, you may immediately encounter it. If undefeated, your ship is dealt one structural damage. Leave this barrier face up on the location deck. Characters at this location encounter this barrier as their first exploration each turn. So, we gotta defeat this, but fortunately, I think she's really good at it. Alright, so the Gunslinger's Perception Wisdom check is a D12 plus 2, so that's pretty good. Before we roll, Olak the War Priest is going to do something. He has special ability that before somebody rolls a check, he can display any amount of blessings or weapons 
to give a plus one uh, to the check for each uh, card that he displayed that way. Now display means you put it face up in front of you and it uh, it will stay out in front until the end of his turn. So we're going to put out this boarding axe right now. Uh, yeah, the boarding axe. And this will give a plus one to her check. So Lyrian has a D12 plus three for this check. We need to get a six. We need to roll at least a three. We rolled a six on the die. So we defeat the lookout duty. And uh, if defeating, you may look at the top card of the barrier's location that give it as a monster, you may immediately encounter. So we banish that. Let's look at the top card. It is not a monster, but it is a spell. It's a divine spell, fire blade. Uh, so Olak may want to get that. All right, so we're going to flip over the top card of the Blessings deck uh, and switch things over to the War Priest turn. So Olak is going to go ahead and explore, and we already know what it is. It's that Fire Blade. Now, actually, now that I think about it, this is a like an attack spell, and Olak really isn't good at that. He's, he's better at, off at fighting with weapons. Um, so we're actually just not even going to try to acquire this. We're going to go ahead and pass on this. We're going to banish it. Now remember, this boarding axe is still displayed, so it's not considered part of our hand. We can't do anything with that. At the end of the turn, it will come back to our hand. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, discard this Blessing of the Gods to allow Olak to go again. Okay, so he explores again, and we find an ally, a sailor. Charisma, diplomacy of six to acquire. We can discard this card to add 1d4 to your check when you are on a ship or we can discard this card to explore our location um, alright we want to try to get this guy so let's go about that alright well Olak's charisma is a d6 and while the sailor is not super important for this adventure he might be important because to close this lonely island we need to banish an ally uh, and if we have one we can use him to banish also the floating shipyard and the Tempest K require intelligence checks to be able to close which we're terrible at and the sailor could help us with that so that being the case uh, the gunslinger is gonna go ahead and discard a blessing of the gods to give us another uh, d6 so we have two d6 still not a great chance but um, well, let's roll for it we need a six and we got seven total so we acquire the sailor to the war priest hand all right, so the war priest ends his turn, and now this boarding axe comes back to okay, his let's hand. Let's flip over the top card, the blessing deck, for the gunslinger's turn. All right, so I think we're just going to keep digging down on this floating shipyard and just try to close this out if we can quickly. Uh, we got a dead man's chest. It's a barrier. This is our exploration. Uh, it's a dexterity disable of 11 or a strength melee check of 13. If defeated, add one random weapon, one random item. Or one random spell from the box of your hand. That's really awesome. If undefeated, you may banish this barrier. So barriers normally would get shuffled back in. But we can choose if even if we fail this one, we can we can banish it. But we want to try to acquire this one. Uh, so let's uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, the gunslinger's strength is only a D4, so we're not gonna do that. We'll do the dexterity check. Uh, so it, her dexterity is a D8. She has a deck hand here. Recharge this card to add 1D6 to your non-combat strength for dexterity check. So we'll recharge that. That will give us a D6. And then the uh, war priest is going to go ahead and display that boarding axe again to give us an, a plus one. So we have these two dice plus one. Uh, not, still not very likely, but we'll try. Uh, we got six, seven, eight, nine. Not enough to defeat it. Alright, so we didn't have enough to defeat this and we can choose to banish it now, but I, I want another sh try at this. So we're going to go ahead and let that get shuffled back in there. Okay, so that'll be the end of Lyrian's turn. We'll reset her hand, draw back up to four cards. We got a Blessing of the Gods and a Buckler. Let's uh, flip this Blessing deck card over for the War Priest turn. Okay, I think we're going to do a change of plans here actually. Um, because the Floating Shipyard requires an Intelligence check to close, and also the Tempest K, and we're just terrible at those. Maybe we'll wait and see if we can force the boss to go into one of those, and then we don't have to close them. So I think what Olaf's going to do is, at the beginning of his turn, he's going to give uh, this Sailor to the Gunslinger. And then on her turn, I'm going to have her attempt the Lonely Island, and then he's going to go to the Shark Island now and try to do that because there's probably going to be a lot of fights there, and he's, he's got some weapons, and he's good to go. So let's explore the Shark Island. All right, so let's explore the top card here, and it is a monster, Merfolk. Uh, check to defeat is eight. If undefeated, each character to this location must succeed a Constitution four to seven check or bury the top card of his deck. So, <laughs> if we don't beat this, we we drown a little bit. So uh, it's only a combat of eight, so we should do good against it. 
All right, so we can't use the boarding axe because that's displayed, so that's out of commission for now. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and display the long sword that lets us use our strength uh, melee skill, which is for Olak, it's a D12 uh, plus one. And this, the sword also adds a D8. That's an average of, I think. I think 11, 6, uh, 10, yeah, 11, uh, so we should be good, we need to roll an 8, and we get an 8 just on there, so we defeat the merfolk, that goes back to our hand, and the merfolk is gone, now unfortunately we don't have anything to go against, so we're just going to not turn reset our hand, so the boarding axe now goes to our hand, and then we reset, so we get to draw one card, uh, boarding pike, so we're full of weapons here, alright, we'll flip the top card of the blessings, and it's the gunslinger's turn. Okay, so the gunslinger is gonna go ahead and go to the Lonely Island. And now, you know, to close the location is Banish an Island. We have a sailor here that we can ban banish. So, all right, let's go ahead and explore. And we find a weapon, a harpoon. Check to acquire dexterity. Oh, dexterity? For your combat check, reveal this card to use a dexterity or range skill plus 1d6. Add another 1d8 if the Bane has the aquatic trait. If you fail a check to defeat a novel monster and you are proficient weapons, you put the monster on top of the... Oh, wow, this is really, really good. So, this is good against aquatic stuff. And if you fail the check, you get to leave the, the, the creature on top. So, that's... I want that for Lyra, and She'll be really good at this. So, let's uh, spend everything we can to acquire it. So her dexterity range skill is a D8 plus 3. Now we are at the Lonely Island. It does says if you're at the, at the Lonely Island by yourself, you get a D4 to checks. So that's good. And the War Priest is going to provide some assistance too. The War Priest is going to go ahead and display this long sword and this boarding axe. Uh, and that will give a plus 2 to her check. So with that plus 2 and the plus 3 for her range skill, that's 5 plus two dice, that's a minimum of seven, and the check to acquire is a seven, so it doesn't matter what we roll, we're going to acquire the harpoon, and it goes to our hand. Now we have too many cards in hand now, so we're going to go ahead and discard this uh, Blessing of the Gods to go again. So we go again, and the next card is an armor, cloth armor, constitution fortitude of two. When you acquire this card, you may draw a card, and we can banish this to uh, reduce combat damage dealt to us and if we're proficient with light armors, which you are, we can bury it instead. So Lyrian has a constitution fortitude skill of plus one, so that plus the die means her minimum is two, so she can automatically acquire that cloth armor. Well, since we already have too many cards in hand, getting this cloth armor really is not helpful, we're just going to have to discard cards and then I really don't want to do the draw card ability because again, I have too many cards in hand. So we're going to pass up on this cloth armor, we're just going to go ahead and banish that and we're going to end our turn and I still have to discard something. Um, I think, I, I hate to get rid of this, this potion of glibness is actually pretty nice but um, you know what, we're going to go ahead and discard this buckler, we don't really need that right now. So we end our turn there and we're going to flip over the top card of the Blessings deck for the War Priest's turn. Since Olak is starting his turn at Shark Island, it does say at the start of your turn, summon and encounter the henchman Hammerhead Shark. So a wild Hammerhead Shark appears. Now these two cards here are displayed so we can't use those, but we will use this Boarding Pike here. It lets us use our Strength skill which is a d12 and also a d8 and at another 1d4 if you are on a ship we are considered to be on a ship at the moment so let's go if we fail the check we can make we can discard this card to ignore the result and reroll the dice uh and he has a plus one to this roll because of his strength we need a nine and we got five six seven eight plus one nine exactly we defeat the hammerhead shark now because of this scenario rules, this hammerhead shark is actually going to get put on the bottom of one of the uh, random other locations. So we're going to go ahead and roll 1d6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we roll a 2, so uh, this hammerhead shark is going to go underneath this location here. So it's potentially two hammerhead sharks there. Now, now because that hammerhead shark was summoned, um, that does not let us attempt to close this location. So we got to uh, uh, just continue digging down. All right, so Olak's boarding pike does go back to his hand because he's done with the combat. These two cards are still out, and now it's time for his uh, first explore of the turn. Okay, Olak explores and finds a weapon, an icy boarding pike plus one. Strength melee of 10 to acquire. Uh, for you, it's a strength melee plus 1d8 plus one, adds the code trait. 
and another 1D4. For, well, so it's like the other voiding pike that he has, but it's an icy one. So uh, that's really nice. We want to spend as much as we can to get this. So unfortunately, all we have is a D12 plus one to try to make this roll. So let's just go for it. We can't add anything else. I rolled a 12, so we get the icy voiding pike to our hand. All right, well, we don't have anything else to go again. So these two cards will come back to our hand as we're ending our turn. Now we have five cards. We have too many here. We're going to actually discard a bunch of them. We're going to actually discard both the longsword and boarding axe. So I can draw a card because later on I can uh, discard this wooden shield and use it as a heal uh, as per special ability. So we'll draw a card. We draw a blessing of the gods. So that's good. All right, we'll flip the top card of the blessing and go to the gunslinger's turn. Okay, so she's going to keep exploring the Lonely Island. We find a Blessing of the Gods. Well, you automatically acquire that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just discard it to go again to get another explore. And let's see what we find. Uh, treasure Hunt. Intelligence Knowledge. Oh, we're bad at Intelligence. Uh, intelligence Knowledge of 7. The difficulty to defeat is increased by the scenario number, which is 0. Each character may attempt a check to defeat this barrier. Each character may recharge any number of allies for each ally recharge. Add 1d4 to that character's check. Each character that succeeds may add a random item from the box to her hand, then banish this barrier. So this will go away either way, but let's see if we can uh, attempt this. Alright, well the Gunsinger's Intelligence is only a d6, which, which isn't great. Uh, we need to try to get a 7. Now she is at the Lonely Island, so that gets her uh, another D4. I'm not going to spend anything extra to try to beat this because it, the, it's going to go away either way. So let's roll this, and if we roll a 7, we'll get a free item. If not, you know, we still pass the barrier. So let's see what we get. Uh, we rolled 4, 5, 6. We just barely missed it. But we get to banish this barrier anyway. Let's get rid of that. Alright, so she doesn't have anything she wants to spend to go again. We, we want to keep that ally in case we need to banish him. So we'll, on her turn, flip the top card of the Blessing deck for the War Priest. So at the start of his turn, Olak is supposed to encounter a Hammerhead Shark here. But I, I realized I did something wrong a little bit before. Remember we summoned and encountered a, a, a Hammerhead Shark and then it went to the bottom of this location? That's actually wrong because summon creatures cease to exist after you defeat them. So it wouldn't go to the bottom of that deck. So, uh, so we just removed that from there. But at the beginning of his turn, Olak does have to fight a Hammerhead Shark. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so he's facing the Hammerhead Shark. We're going to go ahead and use our brand new Icy Boiding Pike plus one. That gives us our D12 strength plus a D8. Since we're on a ship, it uh, gives us another D4. Uh, this is plus one, and he has plus one from strength, so we have plus two to the roll. We need to get a nine. Shouldn't be too hard. And we roll just an eight there, plus two, ten, and on and on. We defeat the Hammerhead Shark, and because it's summoned, this does go away. So the icy boarding pike does go to his hand. And now remember, because this was a summon hammerhead shark, this does not let us attempt to close the location. All right, so now we do our first real explore and, oh, another hammerhead shark. Now this is the real henchman from this location. Um, so if we do defeat this, we, we have a chance at uh, closing this up. So let's go ahead and fight this guy. All right, so we need to fight him, and we're going to do the same thing again. I see boarding pike that gives us a D12 plus a D8 plus a D4 for being on a ship. And we have plus two to the roll. So let's go ahead and do it. We're not going to spend anything extra. We're just going to roll it straight up. We have a good chance, I think. There we go. Roll an eight there plus on. Uh, so we defeat that. Now, uh, to close the shark island is summon and, and defeat a henchman hammerhead shark. So we got to fight another one. We're going to do the same thing. I see boarding pike, same dice. And this should do it. Uh, six, nine, and on and on. We defeat the hammerhead shark and get to close the location. So there's no effect for closing this location. We just banish all these cards here. Now the the one hammerhead shark that was part of this location does get shuffled into one of those others. So we're gonna do the same thing again. One, two, three, four, five, six. We we'll roll a d6, and I roll a three. So that would be he goes to the bottom of this deck here. Alright, Olaf doesn't really have anything else to do for his turn, so this comes back to his hand and he ends his turn. Let's go ahead and flip this for the Gunslinger's turn. Okay, her plan is to keep digging down into the Lonely Island, so we'll uh, draw this and let's, uh, it's a barrier. Illusory War, Arcane, Intelligence, Wisdom, Perception of 6. 
The difficulty to defeat this is increased by the scenario. If defeated, examine the top card, the location deck, and return it to either the top or bottom of the deck. That's your So, wisdom perception. Perception is good for Lyrian. I'm going to show you right now. Now, I'm not sure why it's so great, but her wisdom is a D12 plus 2. So, that's really good. We have a good chance of, uh, of beating that. So, let's do it. All right, so it's a D12 plus 2. Because he can, the War Priest is going to go ahead and reveal this boarding pike to give her an extra plus 1. So it's a D12 plus 3. We need to get a 6, so we need a 3 on the die or better. And we wrote an exact 3, so we defeat the illusory wall. So we get to look at the top card of this deck, and we can either put it on the top or bottom. It's a short sword. It's easy to acquire, but neither of us really want it. So we're going to go ahead and put this on the bottom of the location deck. All right, well, there's nothing I really want to spend to go again. We're still holding on to the ally, so we will flip the card of the Blessing deck, and it'll be the War Priest's turn. Okay, so since we had started on a floating shipyard earlier, no sense uh, in, in wasting that. So we'll go ahead there, and we'll explore the top card here. It's the boss, the villain, the Adaro Barbarian. His combat to defeat is a 15. The Adaro Barbarian may not be evaded. All damage from the Adaro Barbarian is poison damage. That's problematic. Okay, so we got to fight this Adar Barbarian. Uh, let's move that out of the way. We can't use this boarding pike that is displayed, but we're going to use this icy boarding pike here. That gives us our D12 plus a D8 plus 1. We're considered to be on a ship, so we'll get a D4. And just to make extra sure, the Gunslinger is going to do something to help out. The Gunslinger has a special ability. Is she may shuffle a card from her hand into her deck to add a D4 to any combat check at another location. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle this pistol into her deck here. And that will give us another D4 to the boss fighter over there. Alright, so here's our extra D4. Let's go ahead and roll it up. We need a 15 and we, we have a plus 2 to the total. So we need to get 15. Oh my god, I rolled an 11 plus 5. Alright, enough. So we defeat the Adara Barbarian. Okay, so that closes this location for us. We banish all these cards. I usually don't like to look at what I'm missing out. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. And he's going to run to one of these other locations. So we're going to grab a random blessing card from the box. And we're going to just shuffle these up. And then they're going to get mixed into one of those decks. All right, so Olaf's going to end his turn. This icy boarding pike returns to his hand. And this displayed boarding pike over here goes to his hand also. Uh, we're not going to actually... No, we're not going to discard anything. I thought about discarding this and then healing later. But no, we, we could use it to reveal to give bonuses. So we're done with our turn. Okay, we'll flip this for the Gunslinger's turn. Okay, she's going to keep on at the Lonely Island. We're going to flip the top card. And it is a Hammerhead Shark. Time for her to do some combat. Okay, so we're fighting the ham Hammerhead Shark. Combat of 9. And fortunately, we drew a harpoon from before that we acquired. So the harpoon lets us do our dexterity range skill, which is a D8. We get to add uh, another D6 because it's the harpoon. And add another one D8 if the Bane has the aquatic trait. This ha does have aquatic, so we get a D8. It is a range skill. She gets plus 3 to that. So our minimum is 6. We need to get a 9. So uh, let's just roll anything but the minimums. And we got 10 just on those two dice there, so the Hammerhead Shark is defeated. Alright, the Hammerhead Shark was from the Lonely Island, and as per the scenario rules, it gets put on the bottom of another location deck. There's only one other open location available, which is here, because we are closing this one. This one is banished, and I like to close it. We will banish this poor sailor. Sorry, we abandoned him or we killed him, I don't know. But he's gone, and we close this. And on closing, it says... Uh, draw a random ally from the box and recharge it. Oh, that's cool. So our poor sailor is gone, but we get to get a random ally. So here's the allies deck. I'm going to cut it and draw the top one here. Jiffer Tubbs uh, is a gnome pirate. Discard this card to put the bottom card of your deck on top of your deck. Well, that's uh, very random. Discard this card to explore your location. Add the swashbuckling, swashbuckling trait to your combat checks during this exploration. That's pretty cool. So this will go to the bottom of the Gunslinger's deck right now. So the ally comes to our hand temporarily. Uh, the harpoon comes back from the combat. Because of uh, the effect, this is going to get recharged to the bottom of our deck. So we only have two cards. We have nothing else to do. So we're going to end our turn and draw two cards. We get a Blessing of the Gods. And a pistol, that's great. And we'll flip over the top card of the Blessing deck, and it'll be the War Priest's turn. Okay, so Orlok's going to go to the Tempest K, and that's the last place left.
All right, he's going to go ahead and explore and an enemy ship. Ooh, so we get to see a ship battle. So uh, the type is actually considered a barrier, and we see below. So summon and encounter a random ship. If you do not defeat the summoned ship, the enemy ship is undefeated. If the summoned ship is defeated, you may seize it. The enemy ship is also defeated, and you may immediately attempt to close the location this henchman came from. All right, so let's see how ship-to-ship -ship combat works. So we grab all the possible enemy ships from the box. We're gonna shuffle them up, and then uh, what? I'm gonna grab the one that's on the bottom, whichever one ends up being on the bottom. So the sea shanty. Let's take a closer look at that. So here's our ship here, the merchantman, and this is the new one we're encountering, the sea shanty. <laughs> As you can see, ours is a class zero. This one's a class three, so it's technically a better ship. So let's see. The check to defeat it is a wisdom survival of six or charisma diplomacy of eight both of which i'm not very good at when encountering this ship you may reveal any number of allies for each ally revealed add three to your check to defeat the sea shanty well, i'm laughing because uh we have no allies and in fact olak does not have any allies in his in his entire deck but when we're commanding this ship you may discard a card from the blessings deck to add 1d12 to your check to acquire a boon now the merchantman has its ability is when you would roll for plunder, you may discard a card from the Blessings deck to choose the type of blunder card instead. So I like the, the sh Sea Shanty's ability better. So if we can defeat this, uh, we'll be able to seize this ship, which means we'll lose our merchantman. So let's uh, see what we can do to improve our roll. Okay, so our best option here is to do a Wisdom check, which uh, is a D8 for Olak. Uh, we're going to go ahead and spend the Blessing of the Gods here to get another uh, D8. We get no bonuses, but we have a 8 average, if I'm not mistaken, 9 average. And all we need to do is get a 6. So we will roll, and we get an 11 just on the dice. So uh, we defeat the Sea Shanty. So we're going to seize the Sea Shanty, which will replace our Merchantsmen. So that'll go there. Now, um, in future games, there's a list of ships here that we can have. So we can add the Sea Shanty as a list of one of the ships we have. And then we can choose to start the game with that as our ship or any of the ones that we have checked off. Uh, but for now, since we defeated an enemy ship, we need to roll for plunder. Alright, so we're going to roll a D6 to see what kind of random plunder we're going to get. I rolled a 4, which is an item. So a random item is going to go under the Sea Shanty. So here are all the items from the box. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. And we'll put one random one underneath there. And we'll get to see that later when we defeat the scenario. So we defeat the enemy ship henchmen, and we can attempt to close the location. However, you need to succeed in an intelligence or knowledge 7 check. Olak's intelligence is only a d4, and I could spend a blessing of the gods uh, from uh, the gunslinger to get another uh, def but we'd have to still roll really high to get it so uh, I'm not gonna waste the blessing for that so we're gonna fail the check to close it but we know the boss is here so all we gotta do is just keep digging down until we find him so Olaf's gonna go ahead and end his turn and draw a card he draws a magic weapon spell which isn't really very useful all right, right now we'll flip this for the gunslinger's turn Okay, there's no place else left to, for her to go, so she'll join Overlock at the Tempest K, and we'll t look at the next card. Uh, it's a spell, Phantasmal Minion, uh, Intelligence Arcane of 4. Discard this card to give a card to another character. Discard this card to allow another character a location to give you a card. After playing this card, if you do not have the Arcane skill, you can banish it. So, this is an Arcane spell, not useful for either one of us. So I'm not even going to attempt to try to get this, so we're just going to go ahead and banish that. Alright, so I, that'll be the Gunslinger's turn. I could spend this Blessing of the Gods to go again, but I feel like I, I kind of need to hold on to that. So we're going to end our turn there. We're not going to do anything. We'll flip this over and go to the War Priest turn. Alright, so he's going to go ahead and explore. There's a monster, Constrictor Snake. Check to defeat 11. If the check to defeat has the code trait, add 1d6 to it. If undefeated, bury the top card of your deck and return the Constrictor Snake to the top of the location deck it came from. Oh, so it sort of poisons you. But fortunately, we have the code trait to fight this. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use our Icy Boarding Pike. That will give us our strength for a d12 plus a d8 plus 1. And it gives us the code trait. So if the code trait uh, is being used as a snake, we get a d6 and... The boarding pike does say if we are on a ship, we get another D4. So we get all of that to try to get an 11. And we have plus 2 to the total. And let's see what we get. 
uh, oh my god 12 from there and on and on uh, even with that we, we kill it so constrictor snake is done all right so the boarding pike does come back to our hand we have nothing else to let us go again so we'll flip things over to the gunslinger's turn let's make sure we flip the top card of the blessings deck all right, so we gotta do is just keep digging down. We're trying to find the boss. We find a barrier. This is a treasure map. Intelligence, knowledge, ugh. intelligence, knowledge, wisdom, survival six to uh, defeat this. If defeated, examine the top card of the location deck. If it is a boon, you may add it to your hand. If undefeated, you may banish this barrier. So this will go away either way. But uh, it's the gunslinger, so let's do a wisdom check. She's good at that. Her wisdom is a D12, which is really awesome. We just need to get a six. Um, I don't want to really spend a lot of resources to try to get it because that card's going to go away anyway. But we'll have the uh, War Priest reveal his boarding pike here, which will give her a plus one at least. So let's see if we defeat this. We rolled a seven plus one, that's eight. So we defeat the treasure map. And if defeated, examine the top card, the location deck. If it is a boon, you may add it to your hand. So that goes away. We'll look at the top card here. It, it's the boss. So we know he's next. So it's very tempting right now for me to just spend this blessing of the gods to go again and encounter the boss with the gunslinger. And we can use the piss on him. We also have the harpoon, which is good against him. And we have a very good chance of defeating him. But crunching the numbers, uh, the war priest actually would have a little bit of a better chance to defeat him. So we're going to uh, wait. We're going to end our turn there. We draw the top card of the blessings deck, and it'll go to the war priest turn. All right, so now it's the War Priest's turn. He's, of course, he's going to go ahead and explore. It is the Andara Barbarian. Remember, it is a combat of 15, and he may not be evaded. We're not going to evade him, and he does poison damage. But let's have some fun amassing a lot of dice to fight him. Okay, so of course, we're going to use the Icy Boarding Pike plus 1. That gives us our strength, which is a D12 plus 1, D8 plus 1, and the coach rate. Uh, if we're on a ship, we are considered to be on a ship, we get another D4. Now, we're going to go and cast the magic weapon spell. When a weapon is played on a combat check, discard this card to add 1 D4 and the magic trait to this check. So we add another D4 there. And then the gunslinger is going to go ahead and spend this blessing of the gods to give her another of our base die, which is the D12, so we get another one of those. So we're going to roll all of that, and we have plus 1 from the pike, and plus 1 from Olak's strength, so we get all these dice plus two we have an average of something around 20 and let's roll it all up we need a 15 i rolled an eight there well, that's 14 uh 17 and on and on we defeat the endo barbarian and he's all defeated. right so the scenario is over we can see what plunder we have acquired and we got a eye patch and uh recharge this card to add one d4 and the swashbuckling trait to your check to acquire an ally or to defeat a Bane or a ship or 1D8 if it has the pirate traits. That's actually very, very useful. We also got the Alchemist Fire. For your combat check, banish this card to use your Dexterity Range skill plus 2D6. You may additionally discard another card to add your craft skill. After playing that card, succeed at craft 9 check to recharge that card instead of discarding. So, wow, this is pretty powerful. So, pretty good items there. Also a reward for defeating the island hopping scenario is each character gains a random item from the box. So here is the uh, uh, deck of uh, items and we're going to just go ahead and cut it and draw the top two, powder horn and a potion of healing. That's really good for them. So we're here we've reset our decks to their starting 15 cards. We've gotten rid of some stuff and added a couple new things. There hasn't been much change. The only difference, uh, Olak now is keeping the icy boarding pike and he's gotten rid of the belaying pin that he had. We didn't even use it this adventure. And uh, Lyrian is now keeping a harpoon and she had a sap that she doesn't really need. Um, I, I'm not keeping Jiffer Tibbs even though this is a unique ally. Just her ability to discard the... This card to put the bottom card of your deck on top of your deck is just not really useful for either of these guys, so we're not going to keep that. The Alchemist Fire is pretty powerful, but uh, the only one that could make use of it is the Gunslinger, and I like her two items here. She has a Powder Horn and a Potion of Glibness, so I, I think that's all better there. We're leaving behind this Potion of Healing because Ola can heal pretty much whenever he wants. So that's it if you want a closer look you can pause the screen right now to get a closer look at these and we're going to be using these decks on the further scenarios 
Hey guys, remember if you like this video, make sure to click like and go down into the uh, comment section and just leave me a comment. If I made some mistakes, go ahead and point them out. If I had, if you, you know, if I could have done things a better way, point that out to me. And, uh, you know, if you, again, if you think other people like this video, uh, share it. That will help me out very much. And guys, until next time, I'll see you soon.